Welcome to Aspen Affairs. I'm Allison Bektesh, Public Affairs Manager with the Aspen Chamber Resort Association. ACRA is again this year deeming October Guest Services Appreciation Month. As part of our celebration, we sponsor a Best Guest Service member for the Aspen Times Best of Contest. This month, we're highlighting the nominees on the show and introducing you to the humans behind the hospitality. Joining me now, I have Jared Hollinger, the owner of the Aspen Outfitting Company, and Eric Boyden, Director of Operations from the Aspen Outfitting Company, both nominees this year. Congratulations mm, on your nomination. Just, thanks. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, Jared, we're going to start with you. Will you, um, let's learn more about the Aspen Outfitting Company. So, uh, started in 1969 uh, by my dad. He moved here in uh, 1968 in his 20s. And um, yeah, had a passion for the outdoors. Uh, loved uh, hunting and fishing and all the wonderful things that we have to do here. And uh, decided that a way to uh, kind of fund uh, a life here would be to share it with the visitors. Um, so he started doing that and um, he ran the business all the way until 2012 when I bought it from him. I'd worked for him for a little while at that point. And um, he actually passed away in 2019 but we continue to, uh, you know, do it the way that he did it and have a lot of fun with it. So, um, I mean, I imagine you actually worked there your entire life in some respect. Born into it, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and that there's been lots of uh, iterations. Where where yeah. was it um, when it started? What did it look like compared to where you are now and, and what you're yeah, offering? Yeah, so he actually had um, a long-term lease on Red Mountain uh, from Elizabeth Pepke. Wow. Uh, yeah, at what's called the Erickson Ranch, uh, and did very traditional outfitting. So horses, uh, big game hunting, like multi-night uh, outings, and yeah, he, it, was a, it was a bit of a different deal then, but it was a different clientele then as well. Um, and over the years, we've uh, kind of continued to pivot and change as, uh, as the town has changed. Uh, we've been actually had a space in the St. Regis Hotel since it was originally built uh, as a Ritz-Carlton. That was an interesting story. He was invited in by the first general manager there who actually had been a client of oh, his. Great. And then our main store now is actually in Woody Creek, uh, next to the Woody Creek Tavern. And that was something that he and I dreamed up over a beer uh, at the bar at the tavern. <laughs> at the tavern, yeah, appropriately. So, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, and so what kind of um, outfitting do you do now? What are most of the excursions? So we do, excursion-wise, we do uh, primarily uh, fly fishing. Um, that's the big one for us. We do some other uh, shooting sports stuff. We do clay target shooting uh, and handgun shooting, and then we do bird hunting as well uh, in the winter time, which is you know kind of in honor of Dad. That was a huge passion of his, and we've got some great great bird hunting here in Western Colorado. So. Okay, fabulous. Yeah. yeah, Eric, this is your third year of the three years we've done this being nominated. Um, <laughs> so I want to I want to dig into that a little bit. What? How are you interacting with? the guests and what is that interaction like on a typical day? Yeah, I mean traditionally I guess uh, my role's changed with my time at the company um, but historically I've been kind of the first and last contact that anyone has. Um, so whether it's you know an email or a call when someone calls in um, getting the most information possible from those groups or whether it's a husband or a wife booking a trip ahead of time um, you know, making sure everything goes smoothly for them as far as getting their trip out on the water, out on the shooting range, that kind of thing, and just making sure they had a great time when they get back. Um, so yeah, I guess first and last interaction. And um, there's the two of you, but I believe there's also been other staff who have been nominated for this role as well. So there's got to be something in the water. What are you doing? Corporate culture. <laughs> <laughs> Rules, tons rules, of rules. Man. A lot of rigidity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing to make that experience? Is it something about what you offer? Like, are people so scared to do some of these excursions, and then they end up being fun? So it's the experience, or is it something about the way they interact that this keeps being a perennial I, nominee? I mean, I. Well, so I think honestly, I think part of it comes from, I mean, a little bit actually from my dad and from how he started the business and ran the business. He was involved in like hospitality and food and beverage. Okay. Uh, like everybody, yes. right? Had multiple jobs and multiple uh, kind of careers in Aspen. Um, but he kind of, he saw, um, you know, how if you put, you know, kind of a certain approach to uh, guest service uh, in play, uh, there's great feedback. And he handed that on to me. I worked in food and beverage a little mm -hmm. bit before I uh, decided to take the business over. And um, yeah, I think, you know, they say this kind of stuff does come from the top. 
Um, I'm very flattered, frankly, uh, that we continue to have the feedback that we have. Um, this is our seventh year being nominated for Best Fly Fishing Outfitter as well. Okay, great. Um, so hopefully <laughs> see about that. But And a bunch of our guides are nominated as Best Fly Fishing Guides. Okay. Um, and yeah, we have fun with it. We love what we do. Um, and we realize that the guest's uh, experience is the most important thing. So, Do you want to chime in? What is the guest experience? What does that even mean? You know, I, I always joke that with other people that we're kind of just in the business of selling smiles and happy memories. Sure. And um, as he was elaborating, you know, a lot of people in this town are trained, whether it's at a luxury hotel or a fine dining restaurant, everyone has those guest service skills. And eventually, you know, a lot of people that come to us and want to have fun for a living, um, you know, had that training. So it's, it's, it's easy to do when everybody's been brought up in the same way. So. Yeah. You grew up in it, so I don't know if you, um, it feels like it was probably in your blood, but Eric, when you started, was there a certain approach that you had to massage over time? Has your, um, how you interact with guests evolved? Um, yeah, it's definitely evolved. I, I wouldn't say it's changed, but become more natural, I guess. Okay. Um, speaking to that, you know, working in a hotel kind of thing, I was in hotel reservations and sales and group coordinating and all that kind of stuff, so, um, yeah, it's always been very high touch and uh, very, I guess, luxury or, or guest services oriented, and so it just comes kind of naturally. And there's some benefits too. We were chatting ahead of time, so it's not even just the happy, smiley people who um, make that lasting impression. Sometimes yeah. there are frustrations, right, or nerves, or whatever it is. Um, so what happens when conflict arises? How do you still? Um, provide that service and then what's the outcome when you're able to do so? So we were saying, chit-chatting there before, that uh, some of our best clients now, most loyal, you know, longest term, um, most vocal cheerleaders, uh, were, you know, kind of came from difficult interactions um, where, you know, initially something didn't go the way they wanted it to or, you um, you know, for whatever reason, we were perceived to have f fallen short. And that happens, right? Like, that's the nature of doing a whole bunch of fishing trips over the course of the year or doing anything, mm -hmm. right? And um, something that I learned early on, you have to take responsibility for that, uh, and you have to make sure that you do whatever you can to make it right for that uh, person. And that's appreciated. You know, there's... I think there's a lot of, uh, I think, I think Aspen is distinguished by that mentality where, you know, a lot of places you go, it's kind of a cookie cutter, like mm -hmm. Disney world approach to things where it's like, here's your ticket, like enjoy. <laughs> right. Whereas we love what we do here. Right. Like we're all here for a reason. It's maybe not super easy to stay here long term, all that stuff. And, um, yeah, I think that's reflected. And I think that that authenticity buys that loyalty a lot of the time. Yeah, to add to that, I would say, <clears throat> you know, the kind of clientele that comes to Aspen is used to probably a certain rigidity from big corporations, whether it's Hyatt, Marriott, Hilton, that kind of thing, United, Delta, where mm -hmm. it's, you know, this is the line, yeah, and, yeah. and I can't help you from here on. So there's a certain creativity and problem solving we have that a mega it's corporation yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can, can do. So. Yeah. Um, any memorable moments? Was there any time you were able to set up an ask or fix something that has lasted in your memory? We definitely, we were chatting again before, uh, you know, there's, and it's funny, I don't remember the exact time, but these, these little things, it's like, it is kind of distinguishing parts of, you know, developing a business. Um, there's definitely been the, uh, and Eric said this happens, you know, has happened several times, but I remember uh, one client in particular who uh, did not tell us, but it was brought to our attention, whether it was through the concierge or you know, somebody else, that this was gonna be actually a proposal on a fly fishing trip on the river. And so we you know, hustled a little bit and, and got creative and um, had some fun with it and, and added a few little things to that. And it made their trip. Yeah. You know? And obviously a, a touchstone in their entire lives together, right? They are huge fans of ours. They come back every year, which is really cool. Uh, it's beautiful. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're able to provide great service at work. 
but you also are citizens of the Valley. You live right. and appreciate it for the same reason all of your customers do. So I want to get to know both of you a little bit better as well. Jared, I'll start with you. Um, born and raised? Born and raised. And family still around? Uh, my parents are both deceased, but my little sis lives here still. Yeah, she works in the industry and uh, yeah, hospitality is her, her deal as well. I don't know if you're gonna roll your eyes at me or not, what do you do in your time off? Do you get time off? But yeah. <laughs> like, what do you do when you're not working? I do get time off. It's one of those things I work really hard to actually like carve that time out and then defend it and actually take advantage of it. But uh, yeah, I fish actually. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> okay. a lot of the time, it's, it's kind of silly to say that, but uh, a lot of my my travel and that kind of stuff actually does revolve around fly fishing. Um, but I do. I you know I also. Um, I take advantage of that stuff here as well. Great. And that's important to me for sure. And Eric, what keeps you here? What drew you to Aspen and what do you do yeah, in your free so time? So I moved here um, in 2009, obviously to ski. I have the same, <laughs> same story as everyone else in the Valley. Um, but yeah, my time off, um, I'm also very religious about defending my days away. Um, but yeah, I moved here for the mountains, so try to enjoy them as much as possible, whether it's camping, hiking, fishing, whatever it is, but getting out and enjoying what we have to offer here. We created Guest Service Appreciation Month to kind of create that humanity behind that friendly face day in and day out because you don't always hear thank you. Whether you do a good job or not, you don't always hear that, right? So we wanted to say that. And I'm curious about both of your takes just about being in the industry on the hospitality side and Aspen, if that's changing, if that's rough, like what, what does the community need to kind of keep that as a solid core of who we are as a community? I think it's rough, but I don't think it necessarily comes from like the guest interaction side. I think, you know, the we're very lucky. I said this before, but we're really lucky. The clientele that we get in this town, 99 times out of 100, 99 and a half times out of 100 are amazing. And it's like you meet people from such interesting places, interesting backgrounds, important, like serious, big deal people, right? In a really neat setting. And to me, that outweighs any, mm -hmm. you know, like burden of service or any of that stuff. I think the hard thing and increasingly hard is living here. Yeah. Like being able to, to hack it is, is tough. And uh, it's always been tough. I, uh, like you said, I was born here and I've seen it change a lot. And yeah, the last few years, n never been harder. Yeah. So that's, I think, and as a community, we're doing what we can mm -hmm. uh, for that. And I think that that's... Uh, yeah, admirable, but that's, for me, that's where the, that's coming from, for sure. Yeah, I would second. It's not the people that are tough. It's, okay. you know, sometimes it can be the volume. Obviously, 2020 mm. and 2021 were yeah. absolutely insane, uh, ran us ragged, but that's what this time of year is for. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, right. you know, you have something to look forward to. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, um, and it's, yeah, the volume is difficult, but the people have been fantastic. Are you moving towards um, other offerings or where's the business going from here? No, it's interesting. I always get asked about that. Uh, we get great feedback all the time, um, which again is very humbling and, and gratifying. Um, and people are always like, so what's next? Like, how are you growing? <laughs> yeah. blah, blah. To some extent, frankly, like scale doesn't interest me. Yeah. You know, um, I do love the day to day, like the experience of living this business is great. Um, I genuinely enjoy customer interaction. I genuinely enjoy like showcasing where we are here. Uh, with the retail side of things, I'm like a dork about that <laughs> stuff. I love what we sell. I'm all, you know, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it's interesting because obviously it's this day and age in this day and age in business. Like if you're not growing, you're, you know, dying. Uh, yeah, we we've got a couple great locations maybe a little more expansion uh, in the valley. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, that's a question I continue to ask myself. Fly fishing continues to be our, okay. our focus. We are, you know, growing in education um, mm. and trying to, you know, involve the community more. Uh, a big push for us has been our shop in Woody Creek. Uh, the last few years, really trying to become the local fly shop and the resource for local anglers as well. The friendly fly shop um you know there are entities in the industry that are huge big like billion dollar corporations in this valley even um and yeah i like the idea of being the scrappy underdog a little bit i'm motivated to grow in that <laughs> okay uh in that sphere for sure do you echo that kind of having that passion 
needs to stay there, I guess, to, to just enjoy the work you're doing, if it's nerding out about the gear or just learning about the customer. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're in a position where we can all, yeah, nerd out and enjoy everything we do. Um, I think much bigger or, you know, getting your hands into different pies, you know, it starts to lose its allure a little bit. But yeah, I think we're great where we are. Something too that I always think of is, you know, you don't want to dilute what you do. Right. I think it's important to specialize to some extent. Um, this day and age, especially like brick and mortar retail, like little specialty businesses, um, the only way we can compete is by being distinct and different. And I think uh, a lot of times people are pretty used to like, again, cookie cutter rubber stamp experiences. And the fact that it's, you know, local people here, providing for their families while, mm -hmm. you know, living this lifestyle and providing this experience is pretty cool. Eric, what did it feel like to win when you, I think it was our first year, um, what did it mean for you? Um, I was very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, someone had to tell me I was nominated, uh, and then I, I was just blown away when I won. Um, I remember you being psyched. It was a yeah, good prize. If well, I remember. Yeah. well, and it came at a time, like I said, it was 2020, 2021, yeah. um, and it was a pretty... I mean, insane year in terms of volume, and um, I wouldn't say thankless, but <laughs> it was borderline, it was borderline <laughs> thankless, so it was nice to be thanked at the yeah. end of it all. Um, Pretty cool. Yeah, it felt really, really cool. Well, I hope one of you gets to experience that again yeah, this sure. year. Yes. Congratulations yeah, sure. again on your nomination. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing what you do to our community. Right yeah, here. absolutely. Thanks for <laughs> what you guys do, too. Yes, Thanks of course. Thanks for having us. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. You can catch this interview on grassrootstv.org or aspenchamber.org, along with the rest of the nominee interviews. Um, this is Aspen Affairs. I'm Allison Bektesh. Thank you.